just uh, moved at a very deep level. Um, his personal, our personalities, kind uh, kind of matched up. We were, uh, he was kind of um, shy, but very determined. And uh, at that point in my life, I was like that. I don't have the luxury to be shy anymore. <laughs> but uh, right. So I, um, I went to mass, and uh, right in the middle of this term paper of this basketball season, I was the only person there. Um, the, the the priest lifted the chalice, and, he, and I just said, in in, in the silence uh, of my heart, "Lord, do you want me to be a priest?" That's what he was calling you to. I mean, that, <laughs> I'm thinking, and I know it's an emotional thing. Uh, what when you're touched by the grace of God? And he's opening your heart to that. I mean, uh, I always get choked up too when I think about the same thing because it's like, why me, Lord? Why me? Why me? With all of our flaws and everything. But he was calling you to that. And th just think about it, Marcus. I'm a junior in high school, and I'm being inspired by St. John Newman, the first seeds of a vocation to the priesthood. Did I know in February 1977, being inspired by St. John Newman, that I would one day be his successor as Bishop Allentown because that was part of his territory. Wow. Another similar story later on, I'm a junior at uh, Princeton, and I got to know Father John Harden. I would go up to the Upper East Side, the Jesuit residence, and I would talk to him and you know talk a little bit about vocational discernment. And uh, in addition to my great spiritual director, Father James Halligan, it was Our Lady of Victory uh, on Wall Street. I remember um, when I would go in to see Father Harden, he would do an opening prayer, and he was I've met a lot of holy people in my life, but he was in touch with invisible realities. Just in that opening prayer, I can't translate it. It was just so beautiful. But one day, he says, John, I want you to go. You know, I, I want you to consider going to Fordham University. There a, was a priest who was in Russia for many years. His name is Father Chizik. The books, uh, He Leadeth Me with God in Russia. We know the story of Father Chizik, how he... Um, was pretty much left for dead. You know, he was uh, evangelizing in Russia. He was uh, imprisoned. His books chronicle this experience in very powerful ways. Then in 1963, uh, President Kennedy uh, arranges for a swap, and he comes back to the United States. Wow. So it's March 1977. I'm in the. Uh, I'm doing a portion of the Ignatian exercises with this. It was built like a fire hydrant, blazing blue eyes of kindness. <laughs> And I can still have a memory of the Fordham kind of the Fordham main vista, looking into those beautiful blue eyes, not knowing that I would one day be the bishop and responsible for promoting his canonization, since he is from Shenandoah, Pennsylvania, in the Diocese of Allentown, in the great Schuylkill County. Wow. So it's amazing how God works. God works that way in every one of our lives. My narrative is different from every other person's narrative. But those sort of intimate connections that we don't sense at the time are constantly part of every one of the fabrics of our lives. Yeah, um, Francis de Sales, in his introduction to the devout life, at one point talks about, yes, we are to recognize when we're being tempted and analyze that, but also recognize when we're having these inspirations they're happening all the time. Absolutely. And you test them because, you know, they can be, you know, it could be the devil, it could be of the Lord, but they're happening. We just, most of us live our lives oblivious to that, but being able to recognize how he's touched our lives. Absolutely. And Marcus, then later at Princeton University, uh, I just had so many great experiences. I, I started going to spiritual direction to Father James Halligan, who uh, is my father in the priesthood. Uh, he was at Wall Street, you know, Our Lady of Victory, Wall Street. Uh, he had all sorts of health issues. He was constantly, from the time he was ordained, he had these really serious heart problems. So he faced the last things of our faith every day of his life. He would listen. He was kind of, you know, um, he was a person that in spiritual direction who listened very deeply, you know, and just to every nuance of what he said. So I poured out my life to him. And at the end of a spiritual session, he would just really challenge me. Daily mass, daily rosary. Um, he was as demanding as the Princeton basketball coaches we had at Jadwin Jib, you know. Uh, he kept it a lot, <laughs> some of the corrections at a lower decimal, but uh, he was just tremendous. And in God's providence, as I was, you know, completely opening up my life to him, 
the Holy Spirit was training me how to be a priest through this very holy and I think canonizable priest. Wow. Well, of course, another thing we forgot to mention, but the reason you're a priest is because your dad at one time asked for Padre Pio's prayer, right? Well, that's an interesting story. <laughs> I was born in 1960, and uh, so there are in our family, there are four girls and two boys. My brother, Bill, is born in 1962. And so it's 1960. It's a picture of my dear parents, my four older sisters, and I. Uh, I, I had just been born. So he sends, he had had a little bit of a correspondence with Padre Pio. So he sends a letter to Padre Pio. How did that start? I, I, before he's, you know, I was checking, and he, it started as he's a Protestant when wow. he's writing Padre Pio. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so Padre Pio's uh, somewhere in the mix. Right. So then um, he writes this letter, dear uh, Padre Pio, you know. And so he receives this letter back from Maria Pyle, who was his English secretary, a lovely person whose cause is up for canonization as well. And she said, um, dear Mr. Barris, Padre Pio prayed over this picture of you, your wife, and your six children at length uh, and accepts you as his spiritual children. My father writes back, you have to know my father and his sense of humor and his sharpness. He wrote back, he said, um, Dear Miss Pyle, as you can see from the picture, Padre Pio, Padre Pio made a mistake. We only had five children. Uh, so he, he got a letter back a few weeks later and it said, Dear Mr. Barris, I checked with Padre Pio. He is quite sure that there are six. So Bill came along in 1962. <laughs> and so I think, you know, That's I think it's... Uh, I think the Holy Spirit has very special plans for my brother because he was the one who was predicted. What about the, uh, so you become